let's move on to performance list. Uh, so performer management or perform list changes. So when a GP submits a change of role from a salaried GP to a principal GP, so this change, it cannot be updated on the perform list until it's been approved both by the GP practice and the ICB as it will be in the 1st of July. Now, this is something that I really do want to emphasize uh, the importance of to absolutely everybody on this call. Now, depending on your current role and what it is that you're actually doing, uh, so I'm going to look at a figure in a moment that just shows how many as of a little bit of a disclaimer. This figure is uh, is as of May uh, uh, 2022 and we do believe the figures have come down a little bit, but currently there are over 2000 uh, of these approvals still outstanding at uh, commissioner level. Now there's a few important bits that I want to really cover with this. Now, what we're talking about is if a performer summit and a change to like an employment change going from a, uh, as he said, a salaried uh, role to a principal GP role as well. If that's gone through a stage of approval where the practice has approved it, uh, everything's going through, that change cannot fully go through until you as a commissioner actually review that change yourself and action it. And this is where I'm going back to that figure like there's over 2000 of these cases still outstanding across the board. What you will see in your queue at the moment for those of you that are, are already using this system to manage these kinds of changes, uh, they will be all the performer employment changes related to your area or region. It is vital at the moment that we un you understand by the 1st of July, these cases are reviewed and either and a decision is made on what should be done with that. Is it approved or is it rejected? Because as I say, these employment changes that are currently outstanding on your system, they will just be for your geographical area, just where you are now. But let's say, for example, after the 1st of July, when these integrated care board, when this integrated care board change comes in, you you might find that your geographical area has expanded and you will have a lot more of these uh, changes to actually then approve it will just make it a little bit more challenging to actually get these approvals done and it holds up that process this is why I'm saying it's so vital really that you actually get those changes approved before the 1st of July before from what's currently outstanding now obviously you can see the text on screen for the other actions that uh, are available but I would like to say in your activity queue at the moment you'll also see uh, employment changes come through which will show uh, which are relating to a commitment level so how much commitment uh, has a performer got to your region or your area as opposed to another you know they might spend 50 percent of the time in Yorkshire they might send another 50 percent of the time outside in another region uh, I just want to make it clear now these responsibilities uh th that responsibility anyway with the commitment does is not an icb responsibility however as the system was created these changes will still come through to you and what i'd like to say with this is if you see a, ch a commitment change uh, in pcse online just showing the amount of time that one performer has to dedicate to one area as opposed to another these just need approving so it's look at it as like a quick win. Just click on the approve button just for the actual change. We are currently working as well with NHS England to actually get that functionality removed from uh, Commissioner's Portal or from PCSE Online. Um, but yeah, it's just something I did want to really emphasise just so you could, you know, if you do see these changes, it's basically just to prove to get it out of the activities queue. Like I said, it's not an ICB responsibility to actually do this, uh, but as the system was designed and at the time it was a requirement, but we are working to get that functionality removed as well. Uh, so once the PL change is uh, approved as well, the GP practice can include the GP on their annual estimate of pensional profits or income and pension deductions taken from the practice. NHSB, NHS BSA are also notified of the change who then provide an update to prescribe a number as well. But this is where I'm talking about that knock on effect, like it's particularly where we're talking about these uh, uh, approval, those employment changes, salary to principal. If that's not reviewed and actioned or a decision isn't made on that, it effectively just holds up that process. And then you've got performers who 
aren't able to get their pension contributions correct until this has all actually gone through. So I can't emphasize it enough just to actually go through, uh, you know, those activities that are currently outstanding and make that decision on there as well. Now, there are a couple other points that I want to talk about on here. So applications to join the performance list for England. So again, no ICB involvement. Uh, but basically a performer will complete and submit an application. We as PCSE check all the info that's included and then we send that uh, we send all that information, all the supporting documentation along with their application to an RLT for a decision. Uh, and that can uh, leads us on to the next one. So RICs, removals, inclusions, conditions and suspensions. Again, no ICB involvement, but RLTs manage these in either PCSE online or manually through a RICs mailbox. Uh, and RICS updates have them visible through a public facing website as well. So I'm just going to pause there then before we move on to uh, the next bit. Uh, so Debbie, are you online? I am. Good morning. Yeah. Morning, you're all right. Yeah, good, thank you. Good. So what I'd just like to throw over to you at the moment is just some of the questions that we actually get coming up regarding performers list and see what's been published or what we might have new coming through. Is there anything particular you'd like to pick up on? Um, I suppose our main area of concern is just making sure that obviously once the ICBs do take responsibility of the approvals is just ensuring that you've got the correct user admin roles and obviously the PL approvers um, required to obviously accept all the approvals that come through. Um, we do find that a lot of the historical approvals that are sat waiting with the CCGs now, when we actually look and check at the user roles, we find that a lot haven't logged in for say possibly two or three years. Um, so obviously nobody's actually seen those requests, hence why they are still stuck with the CCG. So I just really like to, just to stress, keep on top of the um, user admin roles. If people leave, um, make sure that you update those details. Um, it is just so important that you keep on top of those, just so we can obviously keep on top of the GP requests. Brilliant, thank you Debbie. So what we are actually currently doing is a bit of a comms campaign as well, uh, just to really re-emphasise this point where you may have seen. Uh, so if you if you do get that, any comms from us, please just take a look at that just to give you a little bit more insight into how you can manage those different activities for perform list actions that may have come through to your office. Uh, just before I go back to any other questions, there is this as well that I'd like to go through. It's just to give you a little bit more clarity really of what that whole process goes through. Uh, so when we're looking at performance changes, this figure here is what I was currently talking, what is what I was talking about earlier. So as of May 2022, this was 2,462 was the number of these outstanding activities that are currently at a CCG level. And obviously what we're wanting to do is get this number re reduced right down. And I'm not saying this is related just to one CCG. This is CCGs across all of England. But that is a lot of cases that are currently outstanding where there's a performer at the end of that whose contributions can't be calculated correctly. Uh, so, yeah, you may have seen some communications from us, but we can't emphasize it enough. Just log into PCSE online, have a look at those different activities that have come through and then get those actions down as well. Uh, so when we look at this state here as well, so uh, this is look, we're looking at this really as a performer change and this is just the different steps that one of these performer changes will then actually have to go through. So it'll always start with the performer actually submitting the change from that salary to a principal role. Uh, what we we've then got some back admin that will do. So as it says, the PCSE will assign the case to a performerless case officer. Now, if it's a principal GP uh, employment change as well, uh, we'll email the practice just to advise that the change can be approved. Uh, they'll see an action in PCSE online as well. They can even get a notification that that's actually come through. And this here, this is really where I'm referring to you guys. This is just a, a, a notification to you to actually get this change approved. Until this is done, we can't move further with that uh, employment change then that's actually come through. Uh, so just just on that then, uh, Debbie, again, are there any other questions that have come up in the Q&A that you'd like to cover off just yeah. regarding performance list? So let me just have a quick look. I won't be a second room. All right, thank you. 
So I think one of the common questions that I've come across is obviously um, what's going to happen from the 1st of July with regards to the, all the old requests that are currently set with the CCG. Um, in all honesty, I can't answer that question just yet. I know we are doing a lot of work in the background and I'm sure there will be some comms to come out from that. Um, so I'm guessing if we could take that one offline because um, I don't want to give you the incorrect information about that. I'd sooner make sure that we've got something set in stone for those before we confirm. Um, I think that was one of the common questions. Let me just have a quick look. So we've got another question saying that if the application is pending at the practice, um, whether they can approve. As far as I'm aware, the practice do need to approve um, the request first. Um, we are also doing a lot of work with the practice at the moment because we do see some of the same issues where obviously they've got the user admin roles set up, but they've not logged in for quite some time. Um, so we are doing a separate piece of work to try and cover that as well. So obviously once everything goes a little bit, little bit more streamlined, we should see the approvals coming through a lot more quickly. So again, we've got a question asking whether it matters about the order that the CCG requests are going to be approved. Um, that is something that I would need to take offline myself, unless my colleague Julie could answer that one. Um, it's not something that I'm sure of. Um, would you know anything about that, Julie, about which order they actually approve the requests? As far as I'm aware, it doesn't matter what order the, uh, the approvals are received, as long as we receive the approval. Um, we can our case handlers can then decipher from which case to case which one needs to be worked in in which order. Um, but yeah, as far as the approvals received, just get them approved. 